Hello from Teresa and just outside South London. I hope you're all keeping well. Well, we're the first week into our four week lockdown now. So yeah, I hope those of you who are going through lockdown as well are surviving it. Now with that in mind, I thought I'd make a quick Christmas project so we can focus on something nice and cheerful. If you're not into to Christmas, don't worry, because we can make exactly the same, but just change the decoration on the front. Now before we begin, as always, I'm going to do the housekeeping. So I'm going to go through these really, really quickly. So here we go. One, two, three. First one. Hello to Pamela Pollard, Willie Brown, Patty Rumdy Creations, Chris Jurger. Hello, Chris. Claire Rogers, Glenn Leader, Kathy Martin, Sirin Cole. See, Sirin, I've been practicing your name. Global, Global Hiking CR, Linda Beasley, and um, Linda's from Louisiana in the USA, so a big welcome to you, Linda. Alfonso Gallardo Diaz, uh, Pollard Brown, oh no, sorry, that, <laughs> that should be Pamela Pollard. I've already read your name out, Pam, for some reason I've got Pollard on my next column. <gasps> Willie Brown, now did I say Willie Brown? <gasps> Louise Hoyt Matthews, Susan Taylor Brown, Josie Gito or Gito, Kath Avalon. <laughs> Hello, Kath. We meet again. Um, we um, exchanged a few comments on Facebook, didn't we? So I'm not sure who's stalking whom. Am I stalking you or are you stalking me? <laughs> and you use the word stalking, not me. <laughs> So, <laughs> anyway, with that thought in mind, oh, that's spooky. I will say hello to Shirley Haberl, Hurley, uh, Shirley. I got, um, I was going through some old messages and I saw there was one from you from seven months ago that went unanswered. So, if you are listening to this, Shirley, I'm really sorry about that. But Christine Jacobs, Gail Donafrero, Mary Lou, Auntie Loopy. Mary Lou, I assume that you have nephews like mine who also call me Auntie something and it's very similar to Loopy. <laughs> I'm thinking that it's a term of endearment so us Loopy aunties just have to go along with it, I'm afraid. <laughs> Paper Kitty 99. Paper Kitty, um, I subscribe to you as well. So it was really nice to see your, your name there and I like your comment about mindfulness and we all need a bit of mindfulness at the moment to focus on the now, not tomorrow and not yesterday, but now. Um, I think um, strategies like that really do help us get through this tough time. Hello to Nan Johnson, Anne Marston, Janet Bur Burgess. Janet, I live near quite close to a park with that name, Burgess. Um, Nan Johnson again. Ooh, you sneaked in twice, Nan. Teresa Singrinelli. Um, you made me laugh about the cuckoo clock. Yes, he's definitely here to stay, even though his timekeeping um, is very, very unreliable. So, um, yes, he won't be going anywhere, Therese. Hummer Klein, you made me laugh as well about your dancing. To um, I assume you dance to the fridge or the freezer for your ice cream. We won't go into details here because I'd hate to embarrass you. <laughs> but believe me, I do know what it's like to dance to the eye, to the um, freezer for lollies and ice cream, especially chocolate ones and vanilla ones and strawberry ones and 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 last but not least, P Welch. Um, you made me laugh as well. I've been doing a lot of laughing recently, considering I've got one big sore throat. Um, yeah, you made me laugh about the fabric given to me by people. Yes, it's stacking up. But please don't any of you have that misplaced pride where you like something, something's offered to you and you feel that you have to say no. Don't do that. Do what I do. Smile, put out your nice clean hand and graciously say, oh, thank you. <laughs> Everything's too expensive to, for that misplaced pride, I think. So... That really did get through all the names. I'm beginning to think I've forgotten some. So if I have, I'm really sorry and I'll catch up with you in the next project. But this is today's project. Won't go into too much detail here because it's all detailed 
um, later on. But this was uh, this is our inspiration. These are hearts I made for my daughter some time ago. Um, I've got a key to her flat. So um, I can sort of come and go, and she doesn't know. Although, having said that, she's now got a security camera in there, so <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> she's probably fed out of her nail varnishes and her mascara going missing. So um, anyway, this will go back. She's actually here, so I'm rushing this before um, she makes an appearance. So this is that inspiration. And those of you who aren't into Christmas so much, you might want to base your your um, hearts on these these are what we're actually going to be making very blingy very over the top but if you can't be over the top at christmas when can you so grab your coffee or your ice cream and sit down and i promise this is going to be quite a short to the point video this afternoon oh i've got my fingers crossed when i say that so hang on and we'll be off it's just a bit difficult to get this this string of hearts in there's only three hearts on it um but the pieces in between are quite long so i'm going to have to squash it up a little bit just so you can see them uh, i've got three hearts now this is the bottom, start at the bottom first, this is the bottom and it has um, a droplet on there, just an ordinary, um, it looks like crystal but obviously it's not, a plastic, an old plastic droplet, I think that was from a lampshade, then we have some old, very old beads, I don't even remember where these came from, first heart, now I think I'll just make that a little bit bigger so you can see it well not much bigger is it if I bring the camera down slightly there we go and some pretty music to listen to so in the middle I have a little decorative uh, motive and that's just a flower shaped piece of felt with a big sequin on the top and a bead that's the second heart there. Now I've tried to keep all the three hearts um, very similar in style so they all match. If I just put them all together there, you can see here there's a common theme here and the common theme is the leaf and the flower. The leaf and the flower which appears on all of the hearts. The stitching on the hearts um, it all follows a heart shape inside, if you can see that. And the stitches I've used, herringbone, a small chain stitch, blanket stitch, um, a few French knots and some slow stitch around the shapes, the leaf and the flower here. Also beads and the same stitches on the other two as well. So there's no surprises there really they've all been secured on a length of ribbon on the back it's very pale and i'm not sure if that's coming out on the screen if you can see that on the blue one a pink ribbon here now these hearts weren't particularly made for christmas these were made for another occasion but I think they will translate very very nicely into a Christmas decoration so I'm just going to pop that away for a minute we will be coming back to that at some point I've made a start on mine now I'm just going to use three hearts as well but I might have them closer together I'm not sure yet I've made two hearts to save time because I really want this to be a very short video uh, to help us get through lockdown and look forward to something nice next month so they got mine are going to my three here are going to be different in style these two this one here has has got a pk just like the other one these here the leaf and the flower here are a pliqued so this is a plique with a pinwheel on it then i have uh, and more applique here 
you can see all the sequins there they're actually appliqued onto netting there's a net background there and I only had a little piece of this so I've put the piece that I had down here uh, it's given it a bit of depth as well the black on the red background is just giving it a little bit of depth there I've slow stitched all the way round here um, all the way round the petals here it's all slow stitching I've outlined it here in black thread the same here I've just picked out some areas and slow stitched that in black and I've blanket sewn round the around the edge so blanket stitched the front to the back and I'm keeping the backs plain so we have a nice contrast there between the busyness of the front and the nice calmness the plainness of the back so that is the first one the second one is different totally different once again I have appliqued use quite a bit of applique here as well there's a, an applique piece of lace underneath here I don't know if the camera does this bit here yeah I think the camera's picking that up then I have the applique petals around here these two sequin um, motifs I'm calling them have been applied they've actually been slow stitched down I don't know if you can see the blue thread here there's blue thread running around here that's slow stitch I've applied a red heart on top of the green background here and I've on top of the red heart I've applied a little piece of greenery that I had on here if you can see that I cut out the green piece from this and I've applied it there and then I've slow stitched it all round in related lines you can see the slow stitch in there and the obligatory bling here um, some slow stitching around there so it's very very tiny these hearts are actually three inches at their widest and three inches at their longest so they're not very big at all now the third one I'm going to do on the camera just to show you the process the heart here I took directly from um, the computer I've got Windows 10 I went into shapes and I clicked on the shape of a heart and then I just enlarged it to the size I want but there are there are also free printable shapes if you go online and just Google free printable heart shapes you should get quite a selection but do make sure the word free is included in this don't want any lawsuits coming your way <laughs> now this as I said this is three by three at its longest and its widest so printed that out oh, where have I done with my pins ah here they are couple of pins to hold it in place it's up to you how many pins you you have I'm just going to use just two I don't think I even need three there we go just to hold that in place now I'm not cutting this out I'm going to work with it on that piece there and cut it out later and the reason for that is that these pieces especially the smaller they get can be really really fiddly so you don't really want to be tugging about especially if you're using felt which stretches or any fabric that frays you don't really want to be tugging it around to stretch it or fray it so I find it's easy to work with the shape on with the fabric with a nice edge so that is why I'm not cutting around this until I finish so I'm going to tack all the way around the edge now we all know what tacking is don't worry about how big it is how neat it is as long as you get a nice definite heart shape there you'll be fine looks as if I might run out of thread already 
I'm using that double I didn't mean to do that so what I'll do is I just cut that there and turn that into a single thread there we go and round we go smashing right while I do this I'll just tell you I just had my flu jab I had to go to a civic centre up the road it's not done in the surgery um, and I went in and there's some, someone met me at the door this is all NHS it's not private <laughs> someone met me at the door and took me into like the banqueting room where two nurses were waiting in front of a table and the whole process must have been over in 15 seconds and I was out I was the only person there it was, <laughs> it was really weird it really was and I thought well actually that's an improvement to how I had it last year going to the surgery sitting waiting for half an hour the nurse was held up another 15 minutes waiting um, I thought wow after this awful time's over perhaps the surgery should think of adopting that in future in and out no problem I was back home within 20 minutes how's that so there we go so there's a heart and now can you see that it's a heart shape right we've got a really nice well-defined heart shape there let's put the needle over there next bit now this is the fun bit so i i'll start this off camera but this could take ages because i love doing it oh my goodness look at that now i've grabbed a few pieces here i've not even gone to my rag bag i've grabbed what was literally lying around on the table and i have used these on the other hearts oh look at that that's perfect look oh my gosh that really does fit in there or that way even so that is an option I like this bit because we have the flowers there now this is just like for those of you who do junk journaling this is just it reminds me I should say and it's a bit like the layering that goes on in a junk journal so you put one piece down and then you add to it and then you add to it and sometimes you can't even see the original piece that you started with I'm just going to give that a little bit of shape there because it's far too big I like this this is really lovely but I don't know if I use this it's going to dominate the whole piece let's have a look see that phrase so that's got to be handled with care Oh, that's quite nice now look at this we have the nice shiny piece there can you see that it's shimmering it's a beautiful shimmery fabric and that would just shine out nicely I think underneath that yes yeah, quite like that so let's see what i could put this side oh mind you i did find this now look at this piece of lace here and this shape here is like turn that over this shape around the lace there is just like the heart shape here look how well this matches and how i know that is because i almost used it on the other one of the other hearts look at that it's perfect so that is another option to use that but go to your rag bag and get out a handful of bits and pieces you don't need to be buying anything and play around and see what you come up with now I'm going to play around off camera and when I come up with something I will tack it down great big stitches as we've done before not all the way around the shapes but just across so I'm going to carry on with that and I'll get back to you very shortly I've taken the top of the lace if you see there I did cut it I've taken some of that and I took the white piece as well the matching white piece and I've put the as you can see either side of the heart now at this stage 
it doesn't have to be a true heart it doesn't it can go over the edge it can go inside it doesn't matter because by the time we finish and we sew it it will be a perfect heart shape as you can see there there's bits hanging over and all sorts so that really doesn't matter this is the rubbish stage don't forget so I'm going to leave those there I like that look now from that nice shimmery fabric I did play around with it and I just couldn't get it looking as I wanted it to so I cut a little half from it you can see the little heart there cut the heart and I'm going to put the heart in the center or almost the center like that and I'm going to cover it with a little bit of this black lace with the flower and the leaves uh, that I used on that one you can see I've used it there I'm going to use it again here but I'm not sure <laughs> I'm not sure how I'm going to place it that is a nice round shape there so it might let me have a look yes I might leave that I might put that there now I've started to build this up I'm sure before I finish there'll be something else pop there maybe a flower maybe a pink one but I'm going to start with this anyway now as we've done before and I, I said just a little while ago don't go to the trouble of tacking around all your shapes because it will just bore, bore you to death, literally. So, well, not quite literally, <laughs> I hope. But anyway, we're just going to clip them. Just clip your pieces in place with not, not the thread at the back and then we're going to go across and just clip them all in place with nice big tacking stitches couple of rows like this and you will hold all your pieces in place without the laborious task of going around each shape of fabric there so just down drop down slightly and run across again there we go right the way and you see that what in three rows I think just three three rows probably 12 stitches four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve stitches and we've held it down in place now if you were going to tack around all these shapes it would take a lot longer than it has here now I've just got caught up there round a knobbly bit that's it that's it and that is that to secure it at the back so the tacking doesn't come undone remove the pins oh I only put two in there didn't I and that is now ready for some slow stitch I will start my slow stitch by going around the edge just to define the heart shape and then from there it just take it on a life of it, uh, its own as it always does don't forget it is about a progression of an idea so although you're going to start out with one idea that isn't necessarily the way that you'll carry on as you as you progress you're likely to change your mind and think no I don't like this don't like that I'm going to take that exaggerate and eliminate so exaggerate the, the pieces you like eliminate take away those you don't so on that note I'm going to carry on see what I come up with see if I actually do eliminate anything I don't intend to at this stage I quite like that as it is but who knows who knows <laughs> The sewing's now been been completed and I've put slow stitch all the way around here. I followed the shape of the curve here. So 
there's one row of red uh, slow stitch and several of dark green we've also followed it around here once again one row of red and the rest in dark green following the curve here the center the heart has been covered in slow stitch actually looks like speckling stitch from here but it isn't it does actually follow the curve of the heart although you can't see it too well um, then just the bling the the row of blingy not sequins but they're an illusion of sequins around here and I think that's probably all so it's very very this one is very very basic next thing to do is to cut out the heart shape now as you can see here it does extend over the original heart shape but that's okay that makes no difference whatsoever I've already cut out the back heart shape here so all I'm going to do is place this over the heart here matching I really want to keep these these nice arcs here so I want to match those like so right and then I'm going to cut around the red shape so a couple of pins to hold it down oops oh it's very thick it is very thick there a couple of pins and now I'm just going to cut all the way around the red heart shape which is the back so we'll cut off any bits of fabric that extend past the edge all the way around and at this point I've no idea what it's going to look like the other side right right oh dear I'm cutting off some of that black Right, I can trim that just a little bit more, I think, here. Lovely. <clears throat> Push that to one side. Let's have a look. Yes. Perfect. So let's remove the pins. And there we go. So that will go on there. Now, any little pieces here, like so, you see these pieces here, oh, I'll take that off there. This piece here, we're seeing some felt there and here. Now, and down there, now it really wouldn't matter because you can actually cover that up with the blanket stitch, but I'm going to fill these in with a little bit of slow stitch. So any pieces of red that's showing around the around the edges, I'm going to cover up. So I'm going to do that, <clears throat> and then I'll place them together like so, and the stitching is done on the right side. And I'm going to do a blanket stitch all the way around the edge, and just leave maybe an inch unsewn so that we can put the stuffing in but for the time being I'm just going to fill in the gaps here and then make a start on the blanket stitch we've done blanket stitch before but I will add um, a recap on the blanket stitch so I'm going off to do that now and I'll get back to you right so the next thing is to do the blanket stitch and this is just a very very quick recap because we have done it before so these are the two edges to be sewn together like the edges here going to be sewn together so this is say this is the back and that's the front and I advise you pin them you don't necessarily need to tack but to pin makes it a lot easier it holds them together now put a nice knot in your thread and once again this is all exaggerated so you can see it on the screen you wouldn't use this needle and thread to sew something as delicate as that so let's make a start we're going to lose the knot in between 
the edges in between the two edges so start with the needle in between the edges pull the knot down and hide it there you go so it's already nice and neat you can't see the knot now I find it easy to hold the fabric like this and tilt it it's you can do it that way you can do it that way you can do it all sorts of ways but you choose a style to suit you this suits me I tilt it so I can see the edge and I can then hold the, th the thread down with this thumb so you're going to hold the thread down with the thumb then you'll decide how long or how wide you want your stitch so bring the needle out at the length where you want your stitch so I want my stitch that long first stitch and you're going to repeat this all the way along so needle out at the width you want thumb still on the thread and all this is all there is to blanket stitch thumb down holding the thread needle the length you want and there you go <laughs> my stitch is very neat I'm actually sitting on the side it's a bit awkward sometimes so one more thumb holding the thread down at the length you want needle round and in at the side bring it out at the side the width that you want and there you go so that is blanket stitch and that is all we're going to do around the edge of the hearts and this is it's now ready to be stuffed I've done the stitching the blanket stitch all the way around the edge here and finished there and there just to give me room enough to get a finger in there to ease the stuffing in so obviously that's the front <laughs> well I hope it's obvious <gasps> and that is the back so bear it in mind what I didn't mention before that the back the stitches will notice on the back so if you can keep them as neat um, as possible then um, you know that'd be quite good but if you can't it, it doesn't matter let me look at those yeah that that one's not so neat but when they're hanging flat against the wall or hanging up nobody's going to see the back anyway so don't spend too much time worrying about the back see I have some small flaws on that one there and there this one I think's probably turned out the nicest now this stitch here the first stitch which is crossed will be picked up now when I come round here to close the gap I will then pick this stitch up and straighten it so the first stitch there will now become the last stitch so that is ready now for the stuffing I have some nice clean stuff in here this stuffing is actually um, the insides of a pillow I found it a lot cheaper to buy a polyester pillow an infill if you like and shred that just shred it pull it to pieces and it works out an awful lot cheaper than buying bags of polyester uh, stuffing now just a word of advice when you do put your, your stuffing in or wad in as some people call it make sure that you push it into the arcs here the round bits of the heart to make those stand up and believe it or not this takes quite a lot of stuffing for something so small um, depending on how firm you want yours you might just you might prefer something a lot flatter so therefore you won't need as much stuffing but now we need to pull out the edges make sure the edges are out and I'm, I'm going to pin these it's a very short space maybe just over an inch 
I should stick two pins in there one there and one here making sure the stuffing isn't caught between the edges and now I will continue to blanket stitch from there to there and then that heart will be finished now to join the hearts together like this on their length of ribbon I've cut a, a strip of red ribbon and it was a real toss up whether I had the green or the red but I think Christmas must be red mustn't it with maybe green bows in between not sure yet work in progress <laughs> um, so yes 28 inches there the first thing I will do is turn back two inches on each end pin it and over sew it oops Daisy oh. I'll pin them and then I'll over sew them round the edge to make a nice neat edge then that will be divided into three to have each heart put on and evenly spaced so you might not want to do it that way you might want your spacing to be something else you might want them that way um let me move that you might want them like that with more decorations either end on the ribbon there's all sorts of ways you could do it you could even do them that way if you wanted to do them sideways you could have them that way going across like some sort of garland but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just over sew the two ends and then I will space them evenly along there now over sewing I'm just going to very quickly show you over sewing when it comes to over sewing the ribbon on the back of the hearts like so I want the ribbon from the point to the point that goes in so the ribbon will go right side of the ribbon onto the back of the heart and that way you'll get the right side of the ribbon showing this way and that's just what you want so that will be pinned down just pinned in place to to make it a bit easy to over sew okay so that is what you'll over sew down just that strip there now over exaggerated again this will act this beast of a needle will act like the pin there so imagine now that this white ribbon is the red ribbon there over sewing is just as it sounds just very very small stitches from the ribbon into the felt very very small stitches now bear in mind that these will be visible so it's up to you how neat you make them but this is all you're doing from the ribbon into the background now you can slope them like a little hem stitch that is a little hem stitch there and as you can see they're sloped just very tiny like so or you can just go literally from one side to the other one side to the other so you get a stitch that goes across there's no secret there another way of doing it is just very small running stitches from the ribbon into the felt actually into the felt I have to take that out just little almost little small slow stitches all the way along so there are several ways you can secure the ribbon to the back none of them are wrong none of them are right it's entirely up to you so that is a very easy nice task to do 
that is where I am at the moment so just to recap I'm now going to over sew this and I shall be using the same stitch here as here the over sewing from from one side to the other one side to the other just to close that down and neaten it now after I've attached the hearts to this all the way along I should then be looking at ways to decorate in between now on this one I've added beads on the end of each heart and I have actually got some here somewhere oh what did I get oh there they are I found this and this was very inexpensive as well goodness I can't remember where I got this from but it was very very cheap now I might use these this on the ends um, I might use it to decorate the ribbon at the moment there's all sorts of things going around in my head with regards to decorating this I might make some small bows from the green to go across the red or I might just nip into my gold sequins and just randomly put some lovely big sequins on there so while you're sewing down your ribbon have a think about how you could decorate your ribbon there are loads and loads of ideas and none of them are wrong so just have a little think how you will decorate your ribbon and I'm going to do the same because at this moment I've really no idea but anyway I'm going to carry on with this because it's um it's a bit of a cold old day out there and it's very overcast oh it's only 10 past one in the afternoon and uh, it's looking more like six o'clock in the evening so this is quite a nice little task to do I've got the trees out there a beautiful oak tree which is oh it's just gorgeous colors green orange yellow um, it's just a very nice calm afternoon so that is what I'm going to be doing and I'll get back very soon oh that was a really nice task to do didn't take too long either very relaxing now I've joined them onto this strip of ribbon and the ribbon is secured to each heart the whole length of the heart each side of the ribbon has been over sewn as I demonstrated earlier you can actually see it better on the green heart from the front obviously you can't see it but you can see the beads there now the length of beads are about five inches folded in half and secured to the tip of each heart with a couple of over sewing stitches it's quite difficult now to get the three onto the screen at the same time so I'll just slide it along slightly and you can get an idea of how they look on the ribbon I've decided to use some broken bits of jewellery as well that I have in an old tin um, and this is what I'm thinking of at the moment using these broken earrings uh, incorporating them with the beads so I get a nice dangly feature between each of the hearts and these are just single earrings so if you have any broken jewellery do play around with it and see what you come up with see I like that effect it's sparkly it looks nice on the Christmas tree with the lights going through it and I think at the moment that is what I'm favouring I'm not going to put the ribbon on there now these hearts, broken hearts oh sad um, I, I'm planning or thinking of using those as well I think they will look really nice and that earring as a hanger I think that's just ideal I've only got the one make a lovely hanger now hanging on the tree I'm just very very carefully going to move the camera down just so you can see how they're looking on the tree whoa right the way down as you can see they're quite a length start with the bottom one first one here um, all the pieces of jewellery you can see on the hearts are from my broken jewellery tin 
they're all odds and ends that my daughter and I bought in a charity shop. This is a broken pendant which I've secured in the centre of this heart with just a few stitches around the edge. The hearts here, purely coincidental by the way, I didn't set out to look for hearts but hey ho they were in my tin. That is an earring, you'll see the pair to that later and they, they were both broken. The bit at the end which is what I consider to be the weight, it needs a little bit of a weight to keep it straight. That is an earring as well and that is a pendant. I only had one of the earrings, I mean they're pretty gross actually, <laughs> aren't they? Aren't they ugly? Look! <laughs> ah, I don't know who wore those, I hope nobody watching this wore them. Very carefully going to lift the camera again. Heart number two, probably my favourite heart. Once again, a pendant around here. It was broken. It does cover up the slow stitch, but I'm not too bothered about that because there's plenty more slow stitching around the edge and around the outside. This was a broken bracelet. Once again, hearts. Purely coincidental. The hearts there. Um, then I'm going to move up to the last one. The last one, which started out as my favourite until I decorated them, then I realised, well, no, it's not actually my favourite after all. We have a broken piece of jewellery here. I'm not really sure what that's from. That was very difficult to, to secure to the background, and I did need a little, just a little drop of super glue to hold it like a tacking stitch and very fine stitches around there. This is from a hair scrunchie that I found in the bathroom took the heart off and I've secured that in place with some cross stitches. Um, once again, this is the pair, the second part of the earring. That's, that completes the pair of the earrings there. Now this I think is very interesting, the hanger. The hanger here are two earrings. Oh, that's come loose, I've pulled that with the tree. Two earrings and they would normally go up this way. Now if you look care carefully, the inner one, the inner ring there is its own earring, part of a pair, and that is the another earring from another a second pair. Um, very, very pretty. This one would be just nice for needle weaving because it's actually thread. So there we go. Oh, and the dangle here is from a broken lampshade. I don't know what that is, where that was from. It was just in the bottom of my, my jewellery tin. So there we go. And that is that. I hope you enjoyed this project. It's very quick, very easy to do. Um, if you have all the, all the um, things like the felt, the background fabric and bits and pieces of dangly things and whatever you have in at home you can use. Have a look about the house, you don't need to go out and spend lots of money especially as we're going through lockdown now and can't go out. So just have a look around to see what you've got. This could all be made in several hours. The hearts are no problem at all, easy to do, easy to decorate. I think the hardest part was actually finding the bits to put on and decorate but I do love that one. I really, really do love that one. I hope you enjoy it. it, might be a bit OTT for some of you but I do hope most of you liked it and um, I'll get back to you with another project very soon. Meanwhile do take care and keep in good health won't you. Speak to you very soon. Take care now.